At the beginning of the semester, we discussed the paradox that your friends typically have more friends than you do. This is just one aspect of a broader paradox in sociology called the class size paradox. Let's return to the class size paradox and think about how that might affect the experience of people going through the educational system. The class size paradox has been most compellingly discussed in recent times by Scott Feld, uh, a sociologist who published Why Your Friends Have More Friends Than You Do in the American Journal of Sociology in 1991. At the beginning of Introduction to Sociology as a class, we talked about the uh, paradox that your friends on average will tend to have more friends than you do, and why that is the case. Let's take a few seconds to review. Imagine you have six nodes. These six nodes are connected in a various number of ways. And we can count, very simply, the number of friends that each node has. Here we note that black has two friends, blue has three friends, gold has four friends, purple has one friend, pink has three friends, and light blue has one friend. If a tie in a social network consists of friendship. But we can do more than that. We can count the number of friends of any node's friends. So for black, for instance, we know that black has two friends. They are blue and gold. Blue has three friends. Gold has four friends. Take three plus four. That means that black's friends have seven friends. Now we need to take an average of that. And the average of that, since there are two friends between uh, uh, blue and gold, uh, is 3.5 friends. Because one of them has three friends, uh, the other has four friends. So black's friends on average, or the average friend of black, has 3.5 friends. We can do that for every node in this network. And then we can calculate the average. Uh, of, of all those values, the mean. It turns out that in this network, the uh, average node has 2.33 friends, but the average uh, number of friends of a node's friends is 3.02. In this network, as in most social networks, uh, your friends have more friends than you do. But the class size paradox doesn't stop there. Uh, it applies also uh, to education. And to apply it to education, we need to think about what we mean by a class. And, and very literally, what a class is in education. To be in a class is to be in a group. It's to join a group, usually for a semester, sometimes for a year. It, it, it's something to which people belong. Sometimes it can be a category as well. Uh, in computer science, a class is a conceptual grouping. But in, in general, we can think of a class as a group or a category to which people belong in sociology. Well, Scott Feld says in his work that where classes are of varied sizes, that is, not all the classes are the same in terms of how many people are in them, members of those classes disproportionately will experience the larger classes. Or to put it another way, the average person's experience of class size is larger than the average class size. The key here is that there are two different kinds of averages. Let's take a look, literally, at class sizes. And let's imagine that we have three classes. And everybody is in one class, just to simplify. In the first class, we have 25 individuals. In the second class, we have 10 individuals. And in the third class, we have five people. So if we just take the average of class sizes across the three classes, we would add 25 plus 10 plus 5. That equals 40. Then we divide by 3, the number of classes. And the result would be 13.5. Three, 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 three. Thirteen and a third. Uh, that's the average class size across classes. But wait, that's not how people experience averages. People experience averages uh, in terms of their experience. Uh, 
What is their own experience? For any one person, what's their class size? To find that out, we would need to uh, add up each person's experience of what the class size is. So we would add 25 up 25 times because there are 25 people who have a class size of 25. We'd add 10 in 10 more times because there are 10 people who have a class size of 10. And we'd add 5 in 5 more times because there are 5 people who have an experience of a class of size 5. That's 625 plus 100 plus 25 or 750 is our grand total, and we divide by 40, which is the number of people who are experiencing a class size. And the result there, 750 divided by 40, is a much larger class size. 750 divided by 40 is 18.75. So the typical person in other words, experiences a class size of five more people than the classes themselves uh, have as an average. That's the class size paradox in action for literal classes. But there are other classes of experience in an educational institution, like a university. For instance, there's trying to come see your faculty advisor. Now, let's imagine that we just have three faculty members at a university. Again, just for purposes of uh, an easy example. But let's imagine that the first faculty member has 100 advisees, very popular faculty member. The second has 15 advisees, and the third has five advisees. So, a university might advertise that the average number of advisees per faculty member is hmm, 100 plus 15 plus 5, that's 120, divided by 3, that's uh, an average number of just 40 advisees per faculty member. On the other hand, when students come to that university, they may have a different typical experience. Because if we average across the 120 students and their experience of how many advisees their faculty member has. We would have a hundred people who experience uh, a faculty member with a hundred advisees, a very busy faculty member. We experience only 15 advisees who have a faculty member with 15 advisees and only five of the 120 are going to experience uh, a faculty member who has just five advisees and possibly has a lot more time available. So here you would take 100 times 100, 15 times 15, and 25, and, excuse me, and uh, 25, which is 5 times 5, that's 10,000 plus 225 plus 25. Uh, a grand total of 10,250. You divide by 120 students to get the average experience, which the average experience is 85.42. That is the average person's experience of the number of advisees held by their own faculty advisor. That is more than double the average uh, number of advisees per faculty member, which is 40. So people tend to experience at this university much more busyness in their faculty member than we would suppose if you just averaged by each faculty member. And finally, we can think about a class size paradox in terms of what happens before the class, the wait list. When you have a full class and you have the experience of being on a wait list, it can be very unnerving. You're trying to get into the class. You're wondering if you're going to get in. You're wondering if you should just try to jump to another class. Have you ever been in that uh, experience where you feel like it's you're just waiting and waiting and waiting for a space to free up so you can jump in? Well, now a university might say in its promotional materials that yes, let's say it has again just three three wait lists for classes, uh, and in in one there are. Uh, nine people on the wait list in this example, excuse me. In another, there are three individuals on a wait list. 
And in the third uh, waitlist, there's just one individual. Well, that doesn't look so bad. In fact, the average uh, waitlist length is just 4.33. That's worse than no waitlist at all. But there are nine people here who are going to be experiencing a waitlist of length nine. Three people experiencing a waitlist of length three. Just one person experiencing a waitlist of length one. So the average experience of a waitlist by those who are on the waitlist uh, is nine times nine plus three times three plus one times one, which is altogether 91, divided by the 13 people who are on waitlists. And the average experience of a waitlist length is a waitlist length of seven. So if people look at those statistics and then they have an experience at a university that is really different in terms of the size of the classes they're in, the size of the wait list they have to uh, deal with, um, the number of advisors of their faculty member. They compare it to the promotional material with all those glowing statistics per class or per faculty member. They may feel like they've gotten a bum deal and people may feel unhappy. In terms of educational administration, there's an odd incentive here. If you want to make people's experience the best it possibly can be, you're going to want to even out the class sizes so that nobody experiences a very small class, but everybody gets to at least experience a moderate size class. And so the experience they have will be of, on average, a lower class size, even though in terms of the overall average of class sizes, you haven't changed a thing. You've just shuffled bodies around. That's a sociological implication uh, for education of the class size paradox. And just as we said at the beginning of our introduction to sociology class, this is a situation that does not have anything to do with the dreams, the hopes, the wants, the desires, the psychological state of the individuals in this situation. The experience of people in this situation has everything to do with the simple social structure in which they've been placed. That is the arrangement of people into groups, into classes uh, that have different sizes.